and welcome to another edition of Bullseye. We've got a great audience here tonight. We hope you're enjoying the show at home. Now, listen, we've had some letters in from a lot of people suggesting that I've got mannerisms, and I think it's very unkind because this audience will tell you, I haven't got any mannerisms, have I, audience? <laughs> Sit down! The audience have gone to pieces. We'd like to welcome you to Bullseye. We've got a great crowd in. Let's meet the six people who are going to play with us tonight on Bullseye. Make a nice <laughs> It's okay. Paul, your badge is drooping a bit, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> We're all right. And, uh, and Jeff, and you're from Swansea, down in, from HTV, and your cousins, that's right. Tell us, who do you play darts for? Uh, the Ford Sports and Social Club in Swansea. I see. And, uh, you, you, you don't work there, but you just... No, a, I play darts. I play darts for, for the actual them, club itself. Because we know you're quite an accomplished dart player, don't we? That's right. You play at Ford's. And are you married? No, nope, single. Well, uh, being Golden, involved with Golden. Fords will be plenty of escorts, won't they? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a great lead. This audience are laughing, I can't understand. <laughs> How are you, Jeff? Nice to have you with us. Now, you've got a fascinating job. You work for a solicitor, Jeff. I do indeed. That's right. And how did you get into the business of, of being a solicitor, of working with a solicitor? I mean, you must have had a fair education to get into that in the first place, wasn't you? That's right. Um, I found bread delivery a little bit difficult, so I thought solicitors might be a bit easier. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. And, well, of course, with a name like Locke, I suppose they'll put you in all sorts of cases, won't they, Jeff Locke? <laughs> That's, eh? right, That's yes. his second name, you see, Locke Cases. We'll leave that. <laughs> and, have, a have a smashing night with us. We know you've travelled a long Thank way to be with us. Jeff, off you go, sit down and get yourself ready to play the game. Now, then, we'll move on. Who have we got here? Hiya, George. Hello. How are you, sir? And Karen? How are you, Karen? Are you all right? Yes. Good girl. And you're from, oh, you're from Whitehaven, my neck of the woods. Well, it's a bit further up, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's a fascinating story, this. And the people at home, I don't know whether you know, but Whitehaven was, was a, a, a famous shirt-making area, wasn't That's it? Right, yeah. And you were a shirt cutter. That's right. Tell us a little bit about that very well, briefly. I made shirts for famous people. Can you tell us, yeah. did you make, have you any tales to tell us? Any shirt tales yeah. to tell us? <laughs> Peter Sellers made his last shirts before he, uh... <laughs> did he, You didn't make his last shirt, did you? <laughs> Dear me. <laughs> Who else have you made shirts yeah, for? The princes and the Arabs. Arabs? Oh, yeah, Arabs. And then it all fell apart for you, did it? Did the company close down? Well, no, it's closed down. It's still up in London. It's, ah, but they've, they've sort of come out yeah. of the provinces. Yeah. I see, that's fine. <laughs> all right. Now then, Karen, you, you, you're obviously... How long have you been married? Can we ask Karen? Um, two and a half years. Two and a half years, fine. Now, listen, your first date was a bit of a disaster, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, <laughs> tell us a bit about this. Uh, we went out, went to this pub and we were walking back. It was really late at night. Yeah. We're walking through this little cutting and this dog Two came. Two of you. Yeah. yeah. And George bent down to stroke this dog and the yeah. dog poked him in the eye with Jumped his wet up. nose mm -hmm. and the tears streamed down his face all the way home. Black eye. <laughs> Serious? Yeah. Who did you when you got home? Did you blame Karen? <laughs> <laughs> All right, and you've got a little boy, have you? And Well, we'll go on camera four. Give him a wave. There you are. Give him, you wave it, because he's something to do with you as well. Give him, give him <laughs> Very nice. Give you a wave. That's lovely. Have a good night with us, Karen. You go and sit down over there. We'll be with you in a second. Who are we looking at now? Hiya, Terry. How are you, sir? Right, yeah. And talk my hat off, Tony, you're a tall one. Oh, yeah. You play a lot of darts, Terry? Yeah, I play for about four or five teams. Do you really? Is that every night of the week out? About five nights a week. Is it? What do you do the other two, do you? Play darts, yes. I <laughs> just go out for a night. You just go out for a, yeah. for a drink? Yeah. That's a game Wait, of darts. Because that's a game of darts. Wait, you're also league on the summer. Oh, do you? Because yeah. that's a good old league out yeah. there, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. Now, Tony, but you own a pub, Tony? Yeah. Here, uh, 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 station. The station in Rotherham? Yes. Didn't just hear that, what was it? No. The station in Parkgate. In Parkgate, Rotherham. In Parkgate and Rotherham. I know Parkgate, it's a posh area, that, isn't it? <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> 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 Now, listen, you met your wife in a pub, didn't you, Tony? Yeah, in Birkenhead. Really? Yeah. Well, I, I didn't fancy her. I fancied her mate, and she fancied my mate. Yeah. But it didn't work out that No, way. you finished up, you just sort of... <laughs> ..keys in the middle and you were yeah. through to the finals. <laughs> <laughs> you have a right good night with us, Tony. Off you go, enjoy yourselves. Thank you very much. Give him a nice warm round of applause. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. We've met the contestants now. Let's get on with the game. Come on, have a look at Bullies category board. Here we are, subjects around the board instead of numbers. And bonus areas in each subject to be won by the dart player if he hits the subject chosen by his partner. £30, £50, £100. And if the dart player hits the bullseye, he can score for his team £200. What about Whoa! that? Tremendous. Now, let's get on with it. Once a subject's been hit, it drops out of the game, of course, and bonuses can only be won by the dart player if he hits the subject. The questions are here, ready to be answered. The people there waiting to ask the questions. Questions in the first round were £30 each. So here we go. Come on, Jeff. Choose a subject for Paul. Uh, faces, please, Jim. We'll try that for you. Come on, Paul. £50. For another £30, Jeff. Look at your monitor. 
Who's this? What? Tell me this actress's name. The real name of the actress? The actress's name, yes. Um... Doris Speed? It's not Doris Speed. I need say no more. We've got the buzzer in and he was in quite in order. Tony? Violet Carson. Violet Carson. Just out of interest, you may well remember her better when she looked like this. Well done, Tony. That was exactly right. <coughs> Karen, choose a subject for George. Can I have books, please? You can. Come on, George. Let's see if you can get books for your, for your good lady. <coughs> You've gone into words, so there's no bonus. But early days yet, Karen, so don't let that worry you. For £30, if someone suffers from pyrophobia, what is he afraid of? Don't know, sorry. Sorry? Don't know. Fine, there's a light on and it was on quite in order. Jeff, what do you think? Is it fires? It is fires. I must have that. I'm frightened of meeting old flames. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a £30 bonus. All right, come on, Tony, for Terry. I'll try sport, please. Sport, Tim. try sport. Well, we'll see if you can do that. Let's see if Terry can sort that out for you. And it's gone into places. So we can still ask the subject because it's there. £30 you've got, if you can get this right, uh, uh, Tony, where was the site of Captain Cook's first landing in Australia? There's no light on. Botany Bay. Botany Bay is right. The beach would have done as well. Botany Bay is fine. <laughs> That's all right. Gives us 30 pounds. Gives us the scores at the end of that round. Jeff and Paul with 80 pounds. Karen and George still to get off the mark. Tony and Terry with 60 pounds. Give them a round of applause. That was fine. All right. We move on to round two now. The question's now £50. They're a little more difficult. And, of course, just a reminder, choose a subject that's lit, because that's what your partner can hit. Come on, what about it, Jeff, for Paul? Um, history, please, Jeff. History. Come on, let's see if we can get into the past. History we're looking for. £50. For another £50, Jeff, who, in his own words, singed the King of Spain's beard in 1587? Uh, Sir Walter Raleigh. There's a light on, and I can look at Tony. Sir Francis Drake. Sir Francis Drake in a daring raid on... Con yes, easily confusable, aren't they, those two? That's fine, absolutely right. Gets you a bonus of £50. We move on. Karen, let's see if you can do something with George this time. Can I have showbiz, please? Showbiz. Well, we'll do our best for you. <laughs> He's gone into sport, so there's no bonus, but here's your question for £50, Karen. Who is the first woman to have trained both a Grand National winner and a Cheltenham Gold Cup winner? Jenny Pittman. Jenny Pittman gets you £50. Excellent. We move on. Tony for Terry. Uh, I'll try showbiz, please. You'll try showbiz. Let's see if we can get in the act here on this question. And he's gone into affairs. So, that's amazing, isn't it? The dark player's just that quarter of an inch off, but you're still doing all right, Tony. Listen to this. The transport minister used a, a new slogan in Christmas 84 road safety campaign, and it caused a furious row. What was the slogan? Current affairs, think about last year, think about the road safety, and think about, well, we've a light on, and we can come across to Jeff. Is it drink in moderation? It's not. In fact, it's stay low. You remember the two words now that caused people thought they might have been encouraging people just to drink a little, and they didn't want that at all. Scores at the end of that round. Jeff and Paul, £130. Karen and George still in there with £50. Tony and Terry, £110. So it's still anybody's. Put them around the floor. <laughs> right. Questions in the third round. £100 each. So really, of the three pairs, it's any two can go through. £100, and of course the question's a little more difficult and less for the dark players to aim at. They really are going to have to be in order to hit showbiz, books, Britain and spelling. What do you think this time, young Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> Not a great deal of choice. I'll try spelling. Please. Spelling, all right, sir. Spelling. <laughs> £50. For £100, Jeff, blancmange is a children's party food. How do you spell it? B L A N C M A N G E. Let's see if that's right, Bully. B L A N C M A N G E. Blamange is right for one hundred pounds. Well done. Let's move on. Karen for George. Try showbiz again, please. We'll try showbiz again for you, Karen. Fifty pounds. 
for a further hundred pounds, Karen, who wrote, produced, and directed the American film Citizen Kane, which was based on the life of newspaper tycoon William Randolph Hearst. Was it Orson Welles? Are you asking me or telling me? Telling you. You're telling me it's Orson Welles. You're absolutely right for £100. And he also provided the sherry for the premiere. Excellent. <laughs> All right, we move on. <laughs> All right, Tony for Terry. I'll try Britain, please. Try Britain. <clears throat> And he's gone into words and the category's gone, so we can't ask the question. So an incredible turnaround there. Well, 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 would you believe it? Jeff and Paul with £280, Karen and George right at the end with £200. We've got to say cheerio to Tony and Terry with £110. In you come, boys. <laughs> come on, Tony. In you come. That's amazing, isn't it? That's absolutely amazing because you're home and dry. There are your two. There are your two bullies. Take those with our compliments. You've got your darts there on your bullseye badge. Wear it with pride. And you've got all together. Let's just check it. £110. There's a hundred. And there are one, two five pound notes, which gives you £110. Take it with our compliments. Thanks very much for playing the game. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Tony. Thanks for coming with us. Give them a nice round of applause. Do fine. That's Take it with us. Well done, boys. Thank you. All right. Come with me. We move on to round two now. Here we use a traditional match play dartboard with two couples left. In this next six or seven minutes, you're going to see another couple go because this time it's pounds for points. Dart players scoring as many darts, as many points as you can for pounds for your partners. All right, so it's Paul up to the hockey. Over to Tony. Round one, and it's Paul to throw first. 20. Five. And one. 26. 26 to be, George. Five. 20. Another 20, 45 and takes the first round. So this question, Karen, is worth £45 to you. Listen very carefully. It's general knowledge, nothing specific. Who was the famous Australian outlaw of the 1800s? Who, when he was captured, was wearing armour made out of old ploughshares with a tin bucket over his head? Sorry, I don't know. No idea. Well, thank you for saving us time, Karen. Jeff, is it worth a stab? Uh, don't think so. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was Ned Kelly. Ned Kelly, the famous <clears throat> character of folklore in Australia. Carry on, Tony. Scores as they were. 280 playing 200. Right, Paul. Round two. 20. 20. And another 20. That's 60. 60 to beat. 20, 12, and a 5, 37, second round to Paul. Jeff, £60 worth of question for you here. Which, organi which organisation has the motto, Blood and Fire? Salvation Army. Very casual, almost, <laughs> guess, but you're absolutely right. It is, in fact, the Salvation Army. You see, the audience there thought that was a gag. It's absolutely right. Which gives us two, £340, playing 200 and back to Tony. OK, Paul, final round. 20. 5. And 20. 45. 45 to beat, George. Treble 20, 60. A 5. And a 20, that's 85, so the final round to George. Now, Karen, it's £85 with the question. It can't get you through to the next round, but it's still quite a valuable question. How often is the famous Oberammergau passion play performed, Karen? Uh, every ten years. Every ten years gets you £85, which gives us £340 playing £285. It's not enough, our couple from Whitehaven, but it's not bad, almost £300, is it? Come on, in you come. Give them a round of applause. They've done very, very well. <laughs> well done. You did very well. Come on, Karen. You've done very, very well. You've done very, very well there. Nearly £300. There are your bullseye tankers. Rather good, those. And, of course, your, your bullies with the darts and the badge. They'll look well in Whitehaven. They'll feel quite at home at Whitehaven. And you've got, all together, you've got £285. It's going to take me about two minutes to count this out. Time to see you back just then.
this edition of Bullseye. Here, as you know, this part of the game, we enlist the skills of a professional dart player to throw for charity. The, the charity is chosen by our finalists. If he gets 301 or more, we double that. Pounds for points, so the charity can win a fortune. It's become a matter of pride and, uh, between all the professions in the land, and we're presenting this bronze bullet to the professional who scores the highest throughout the series. We have a gentleman tonight who uh, is, uh, makes Lionel Blair and Liberace look like Wurzel Gummidge. <laughs> He's a gentleman who is appearing this Christmas in the West End of London at the top of the Christmas tree on Trafalgar Square. <laughs> He's throwing for charity tonight. We think the world of him on Bullseye, as does the nation. Please give him a nice warm welcome, Bobby George. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bob. Best of luck. First of the nine. That's five. Trouble 20, 60. And that's the trouble 5, 15, so that's 80, so a good start, Bob. Twenty. Twenty. And twenty, that's sixty, so hundred and forty and three darts to go. Five. Twenty. Treble twenty, that's eighty-five, so that's two hundred and twenty-five. Well done, Polly. <laughs> 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 I saw you first, then it does mean a lot to you to do well for this charity, doesn't it? Well, no, it's very difficult. It, it is, isn't it? No, it? And it does devastate you when, you when you don't do as well as you know you can. <laughs> no, you, you yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> Listen, we're pleased to have you on the thing. You've got £225, young sir, and I, I know you're not satisfied with it, but they will be, the two lads from the South Wales. In you come, boys. Now then, tell us a, tell us a little bit. <laughs> All right. Tell us a little bit about the charity that, that Bob's got you the money uh, for. The actual charity's going to us a BBK unit from our local hospital in Morrison, Swansea. Uh, so we hope that you can do some good for them. Well, that's £225, courtesy of you, Bobby. Thanks for coming. Always Thanks nice to have you on the programme. Keep working hard, because I know you Thanks. are doing. Look after yourself. Tell that, Bobby. All right. That'll do for me, won't it? Go on, mate. We're going to look at Bully's prize board now. This is the bit. It's downhill for you now, lad. Just relax. You're just a little poor. You're a little bit tense still, aren't you? Come and have a look at this. Because it's, uh, it's Bully's prize board. You've, you've got to go home with a lot more than you came with now. Red segments and black segments, but the red segments are what we're interested in. There they are. In one. It's slick, it's quick, ready in a tick, if you cook with this microwave oven. In two. The sweet smell of success, this alluring perfume and a crystal sprayer. In three. For kids going to the top, a play frame kit. In four. Mainly for her, but also for him, a sewing machine. In five. For a really special cup of tea, a silver tea service. In Six. Stay in touch with this portable radio, TV and cassette player. In seven. For the big break you're looking for, try this snooker table. In eight. You'll get a title if you win this prize. It's a hundred pounds worth of books of your choice. And Bully's special prize. Face the music and really enjoy it. This attractive hi-fi unit will play the very latest compact discs. Now then. All right. Can you remember where they are? Nine prizes. You can win the lot. All right. Six for the dark player, three for the non-dark player. A little poem to help you. Keep out of the black and in the red. Nothing in this game for two in a bed. Off you go, over to Tony. OK, Paul, let's take it nice and easy. OK? Off we go. First of the nine. That's red. It's number two. That's the perfume sprayer. Black. But that's red, it's number one. You've won the microwave oven, that's yeah, fine. Good start. OK, Jeff, just take your time. It's black. Black. But that's red, it's number eight. You've won £100 worth of books. Well done. Three prizes, then, and three darts to go. OK, Paul? Black. That's red, it's number seven. That's fine, that's the snooker table. Oh, that's just in the black, unlucky. Well, boys, let's have a look at what you've won. You've won the microwave oven, the perfume sprayer, the snooker table, and £100 worth of books. 
Here we go. The, the prizes. Do you want to gamble those against tonight's star prize, which is hiding behind Bully? 101 or more with six darts. Three for Paul, three for Jeff. You've got the time it takes the board to revolve to tell us what you'd like to do. I do ask you to think about it. You've won four, four prizes. What do you think, audience? What would you, would you have a go? Come on, help him. Don't be frightened. Shut. Well, come on. What are you doing now? You've seen the game. Oh, now then. It, the board's round, boys, and I'm going to ask you to give me a decision now. We've had a beautiful day today, Jim, and I think we'll keep the prizes. You're going to keep the prizes? Well, course. And come on, boys. In you come. In you come. Any marks there, boys? There we are. I'm there. That's it. Lovely. That's no problem. You've done all right, boys. You've had a smashing day. There's your money. It's in your bullseye tankards. £340. And your bendy bullies. There they are, with your darts and your badges. Take all this lot with our compliments. There you are. There you are. And there you are. And there you are. Well done, boys. Off you go. It's been a pleasure to have you on the show. You've been doing great. Well done. All right. Well, uh, about seven minutes ago, we saw the back of George and, George and Karen Simpson. They're from Border. They have £285. What are they going to do with it? We'll ask them to tell us now. Back they come on the set. Here we go. Come on. Now then. It's decision time. Now, I know Whitehaven's renowned for its <coughs> caution, isn't it? Yeah. £285 is a lot of money in Whitehaven, isn't it? Is it enough money to tempt you to gamble? What are you going to do with it? Yeah, we're the second uh, lads chance there. You go, well, that's a lovely... They, they, I don't know whether you heard that at all, because they're, they're a little bit nervous. They said they're going to give the first couple a chance to go for the star prize. I do know you need the money anyway, and every success. Thanks very much for coming on the programme, the pair of you. What a lovely couple. Off you go. Great. All right. Uh, a couple we lost, two Yorkshire lads. We know one of them's a particularly good dart player. He was devastated when he left us, but he could well come back now and could shock the world by taking the star prizes. £110, what's he going to do with it? Back you come, boys. <laughs> In there. <laughs> you never thought you would be back on this set tonight, did you? Now, that, this is a big gamble for a Yorkshireman, because I know what you're like with your money. You can peel an orange in your pocket, you lads. That's the first I've seen of it. It's a bit He hasn't taken it out of his pocket. You're going to have a go for it. Yeah. We wish you ever... Remember, of course, if you win whatever it is behind there, you get this back. That's your gamble. You get your stake back, don't you? We wish you every success. Non-dart player first. All right. The dart player, come and stand with me, and it's over to Tony for tonight's gamble. Let's take your time, Tony. All right. 101 or more for tonight's star prize. Off we go. Five. Treble one, three. Another one, so just nine scored. Terry, 92 or more. It's one. Another one. It's not easy. Hard luck, Terry. Well, never mind. You were right, Terry. You were right to have a game. It was a nice. Come on, look at this. I never thought you would have won tonight because it's a super prize. Come on, in you come. That could have been yours tonight. It's a two door Vauxhall Nova. Beautiful car, aerodynamically styled. It's absolutely superb prize. But, well, there you are with £110. I think you're absolutely right to have a gamble. Stay there. We'll say goodnight to everybody. We're asking you at home. Just, uh, is it all that easy? 101 in six darts. Very good dart players tonight. Didn't just manage it, but never mind. They've had a great day. We'd uh, like to thank Bobby George for being with us tonight. The incalculable Tony Green, a superb studio audience. Thank you for watching at home. Watch us next week because it's uh, a bit good, isn't it? A bit of bully each week. Bye.